All right, section 2.1 is broken line graphs. I'm just going to go over uh, a few examples here. So broken, broken line graphs are useful for showing a trend over time. And usually what you have is you have an amount on the left-hand side or up the y-axis, and you have the time variables along the x-axis. In this case, it's a month. So the graph below shows the average rainfall in Regina, Saskatchewan, per, uh, by month. So it's got January, February, March, all the way across to December, and then it shows the values from 0 to 25 along the y-axis. And you have to really be careful. You want to check to see what each line represents. So in this case, I know that from 0 to 5, so each one's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Each line represents one unit. So what month has the highest average, in this case, centimeters, average snowfall? So you look to see what would be the highest average snowfall. Oh, well, this is the highest dot. So therefore, December would be the answer for that one, because it has the highest average snowfall. During what three months is there no snowfall? Well, I can see right here, down at the bottom, that there are one, two, three dots along the x-axis, which are at a value of zero. So therefore, those are the three months. We have June, July, and August. June, July, and August. There was no rainfall. During what month is the average rainfall approximately twice as much as the average October snowfall? Sorry, I keep saying rainfall. Snowfall. Um, the average October snowfall is right here, which happens to be one, two, three, well, there's five, six, seven. So we're looking at a place that has twice as much. So that's going to be equal to 14 centimeters of snow. So 14 centimeters of snow is what I'm looking for. If you look at 14 as the line right below 15, and I look along this line here, this one is close, but it's not right on the line. This one is much closer. It looks like it's directly on the line. So therefore, February would be the answer for that one, for snowfall. Um, and of course, snow falls nothing in June, July, and August, typically, especially in, uh, in Saskatchewan. So there you have the first example. Um, this, these are, again, taken right out of your workbook on page 59. So going down, the solutions are right there at the bottom. Now, I want to go over this one, which is on page 60 of your workbook. You can follow along if you want. Um, this one says, the following graph shows Tom's spending on lunches for the past week. So again, it's got days of the week, time along the bottom, and the amount of money spent along the, the y-axis, the vertical axis. Typically, that's always how it goes. Time always goes along the x-axis because time keeps on going and going and going. And then we have questions based on this broken line graph. So how much did he spend on lunch on Wednesday or Friday? So here's Wednesday, there's Friday. So on Wednesday, let's use different colors. Let's use purple for Friday, red for Wednesday. So red Wednesday's right there. We got one, two, three. Is each one worth a dollar though? Let me just check. One, two, three, four, five, and that's five. Good. You always, always should check. So he actually spent one, two, three dollars on Wednesday. Now let's check Friday. How much did he spend on Friday? Oh, nothing, right? It's right along the x-axis there. So he didn't spend any money on Friday for lunch. Part B, on what day did he spend the most on lunch? And how much was it? And then you're supposed to give a possible reason. So this is just kind of like figuring out, well, why would he spend so much? Well, all I have to do is look to see this one here is by far the most. It's on Sunday. On Sunday, he spent approximately, well, the top line is 20, so I know it's $19. And give one possible reason why he might have spent so much in that day. You could make up any possible reason that makes sense. It's got to make sense. So maybe he took his friends out for dinner, or lunch, I mean, took friends out. Maybe. Could be something else. Maybe he bought a more expensive lunch. Maybe he went to a more uh, expensive restaurant. Maybe he went to a restaurant as opposed to buying groceries. There's lots of different reasons reasons, um, reasons you could have. Okay, so this example two, I want to go over it because this shows how to draw a line graph uh, and from data given. So Jacob owns a small appliance repair company. He tracked the company's net profits over a 10-year period. He's examining the data to see if there's a trend and to decide if he can increase the salaries of his employees. Okay, so he wants to use this for his business. Here we have the year from the year 2000 to 2009. Uh, we have the profit from $5, 15, 18, 35. So the trend is that it's actually going up um, and it wants you to, first of all, graph the data. 
I have the data already graphed down here for me. This is again on page, what page is this? 63 in your textbook. Um, and notice how they graphed it. I'm just gonna zoom out here so we can see the difference between the graph and the chart. So there's the chart up here. Let's scroll down one more here. Um, the dates are along the bottom. So each, each line is worth um, like 2000, 2001, 2002, 2003. And then you have the dots on those lines. But notice how they did the profit. Did they make it go up like five, six, seven, eight, nine? Well, they kind of did, but they only put values for every five, 10, 15, 20, 25. Every five is only shown. But they did make sure that each line goes through one, two, three, four, five. So each line is worth one. So they did show that on the graph. But notice on the side, they only made it go up by 0, 5, 10, because otherwise it would get way too cumbersome having way too many numbers on the side there. So they graphed it, they put dots at 2000 because it should have been five, uh, around $5,000 because they're in thousands of dollars. And then the next one, 2001, they have at $15, which is up here. The next one at 18, so it should be up here at 18 and that's for the next year. And the next year should be at 35. So just be aware of how you're doing that, right? And then what they do is they connect the dots with lines. They don't make it all curvy and nice. They, it's a broken line graph, right? They're just trying to see directly from this dot to this dot, what is the slope? What is the slope? What is the slope? So they're trying to, they're trying to see very clearly what happened. And here's a big dip. So there you have the graphing the bro broken line graph. Make sure that you have the scale on the left hand side uh, and that you can clearly see that and that each dot is connected with a line, a straight line. Is there a general trend in the data? Well, the general trend looks like it's basically going up, right? Looks like his profit is going up, with the exception of this one here. So maybe in 2007, he had a bad year. This is why people in analyzed businesses want to have broken line graphs, because they're so easy to see, oh, look at this year. Our profits went way down. But look, in 2008, they went way up, surpassing what they were in 2006. So this is why these are important. So the gen general trend is that it is the profits are going up. Uh, the exception is in 2007, like we said, which may be a bad year. So that's how to draw a broken line graph and then interpret, interpret the data. All right, last thing I wanna go over is two basic terms, interpolate and extrapolate. Interpolate means that you're looking at a graph and you see all the dots but there are these places in between with the lines that have no dots on them. And you have to kind of guess to see where that is or what value that is on your um, y-axis or x-axis. Extrapolate means that your graph ends right here. But what would happen after? What would happen after? Would it go up? Would it go down? So you have to kind of figure out or guess what the graph is going to do after. That's extrapolation. Extrapolate means after the graph. Interpolate means within, in the graph. So in, x, x means outside. So we got the following graph shows the growth rate of a bean plant that David planted in his vegetable garden. So he's tracking the height in centimeters of this bean plant that he grew. Um, uh oh, David forgot to record the height of the bean plant on week four, right here. Use the graph to interpolate. So we're going within, within the graph interpolate the height of the plant that week. So we just have to go up from four all the way to our graph. And then we have to go over to the Y axis to kind of figure out, well, what's it going to be? Now, again, this is why it's really important to know your scale. Look, it goes 0, 10, 20, 30. So what does each line represent? Five, right? Five, 10, 15, 20. Each one is worth five. So this is almost in the middle. We could say maybe 23 maybe 24, 22, somewhere in there. It's got to be pretty close though. I'm going to say 23 <clears throat> because it's pretty close to 25. It would actually be 23 or 24. It would be fine. 23. So the height would be 23 or 24 centimeters using interpolation. Part B, what might the height of the plant be in week 12? Well, there is no week 12. That's why we have to extrapolate extrapolate the data for week 12. We go up, we think, well, look at the trend. It seems to be kind of leveling off. So maybe it's reaching its top height. So I would say that it would probably stay the same. 
probably stay the same. I mean, once a plant reaches a certain height, usually it doesn't, especially bean plants, um, not going to get too much higher. So it's just below 40. So let's say 39. But again, I'm just guessing. You, I mean, you could maybe say it would be, but don't guess like, oh yeah, it's going to be way up here. Like don't, don't guess something that's way off. You want to guess something that makes sense in terms of your graph. And lastly, write a straight statement describing trends in the beans plant growth rate from week zero to week 11. <clears throat> so you would say that it grew a little bit, then it grew a lot between week two and week five. Then it generally, it gradually grew a little more until it reached a peak height at week 10, right? So it grew a bit up until week two, then it grew quite a lot to week five, and then it grew gradually and then leveled off at week 10. That would be the general trend. Or you could just say the general trend is that it grew um, up to a maximum height. Just be, be simple, be um, as explanatory as you can. So that ends off chapter or section 2.1 on broken line graphs. If you get stuck, just go back, uh, watch any of the examples again.